Welcome everybody to Watching the Hawks. I'm Sean Stone. I'm joined today by Caleb Maupin, our RT correspondent. Uh, I want to start by asking about the 60 Syrian army soldiers that were killed in, by the United States on September 17th. How significant was that strike? And really, what, what happened in that situation? Well, here you have, I mean, this is, I mean, you ask how significant it is. I don't think anyone could say it wasn't significant because you have 60 at least of the people that are on the front lines fighting against ISIS. Uh, the United States is fighting a war against ISIS, as U.S. leaders say, um, but instead of killing ISIS, we're killing the people that are on the front lines fighting against ISIS. Um, let's keep in mind also that there hasn't been a U.S. airstrike against ISIS or a U.S. airstrike against al-Qaeda that has ever killed this many people. You know, uh, and these are, these are Syrian army soldiers. It's, it's certainly, I, I don't think anyone could say it was a trivial matter by any means. Uh, it's, it's quite quite a big deal, quite an international incident. And what can we make of the actual uh, reason? Was it an intentional strike, do you think? Well, or U.S. leaders say it was unintentional. That, that's, that's, that's what they have said. Um, but I, I can understand why there's a lot of outrage coming from, from the Syrian government. I mean, these are the people that are risking their lives fighting against ISIS, and then they're being killed. Um, and, I mean, there, there was a U.N. Security Council meeting that was called. Um, and if you listened to the words of U.S. Ambassador Samantha Power, I mean, after the U.N. Security Council meeting, she was certainly filled with outrage. But her outrage wasn't really about the fact that, that, uh, that 60 Syrian soldiers who were risking their lives and fighting against ISIS had been killed. She was outraged that the meeting had been called. She called it a stunt. She accused Russia of grandstanding. Uh, she seemed to just not approve of the fact that a U.N. Security Council had been, meeting had been called in, in response to the killing of 60 anti-ISIS fighters. Right. Well, then the following, uh, basically within the next two days, there's another attack that takes place against the U.N. convoy there. And, of course, the U.S. is blaming Russia for the attack. Could it possibly have been retaliation? Well, we simply don't have all the facts yet. I mean, uh, an, an attack on a humanitarian convoy is, is not acceptable under international law. That's, that's very clear. But all the facts just aren't there. I mean, uh, Russia has called for an investigation to find out what exactly happened, who's to blame. Um, and, and now we're actually seeing some reports that there was actually a U.S. Predator drone in the area. Now, so we just don't have all the information yet, but these, these accusations are being hurled uh, by leaders of the United States, and, and things are escalating very quickly. It's not the kind of thing that anyone really feels comfortable seeing on the international stage. Right. Well, so in response to the escalation, of course, John Kerry now has spoken at the UNGA. He called for Russia to help the United States in keeping Assad's Air Force grounded. So isn't this essentially a no-fly zone he's proposing? Well, th that's interesting. So, you know, there are, there are Russian aircraft in Syria, but they're there at the invitation of the Syrian government. The Syrian government has invited them to come and help them fight against ISIS. There are U.S. aircraft as well as U.S. military forces in Syria that are not there at the invitation of the Syrian government. They, they have essentially, this is essentially an invasion of Syria by the United States. And now the U.S. is calling for Syria not even to have their own planes. Right, so some 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 things here. I, I can't. Ex we can't really expect the Syrian government to accept that. I don't think. Uh, I I just I really you know I, I it would make sense for them to to not accept such a request. Mm -hmm. But what do you think Russia's response might be? I mean, they obviously they're sending this aircraft carrier to the Mediterranean. What what might that indicate? Well, again, we're seeing an escalation. But I mean, at this point, you know, everyone in the world seems to agree that ISIS is a big threat. I mean, we see the terrorist attacks that have happened, but there seems to be a, a differing approach in how to go about fighting ISIS. Uh, on the one hand, you have some countries that are saying, you know, we want to stand with the Syrian government and, and defeat the menace of terrorism. And then you have other forces that say, well, we want to defeat ISIS, but at the same time, we also want to topple the Syrian government. And, and these, two, uh, these, these two strategies or these two uh, foreign policy goals don't seem to, to really coincide. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that seems to be the major difference between various world powers. Well, recently, a few weeks ago now, we heard about this chemical attack. Again, another gas attack that's occurred in Syria, this time with chlorine gas. And of course, the immediate uh, allegation was the, that the Assad government was responsible for the bombings. What do we actually know about what occurred? Well, well, you know, the, the way the media has handled the issue of chemical weapons in Syria is, is very interesting because early on in the war, Carla Del Ponte from the United Nations came out and said that the al-Nusra Front and some of the anti-government fighters had been using sarin nerve gas, a very deadly chemical weapon. And she, she very openly stated that the rebels that are trying to overthrow the Syrian government are using chemical weapons. It received almost no publicity in the U.S. media. However, every time there is a chemical attack or an alleged chemical attack, immediately the U.S. press 
press blames it on the Syrian government. Um, and I mean, I'm sure that the matter is being investigated. We know that the Syrian government has already given up all of their chemical weapons. Now, I mean, chlorine is something that is in the country, so I suppose it's possible. But again, we don't have the facts, but allegations are being hurled. Uh, the, the media is getting, getting very emotional. There are calls to, for the U.S. to invade Syria and, and topple the government. Uh, it, it's, it's an escalation that, that we haven't seen in international politics in a long time. Absolutely, and obviously it's a civil war that's going to continue. So we appreciate you for joining us today, Caleb. I'm sure we'll be speaking again in the future. Sure. Thank you.